Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Hey Footwork fans, this week we sit down with my current teammate, Morten Knudsen. He shows his unique path through the top youth system in Denmark, youth national team appearances, a move to Italian Giants, Inter Milan, and much more. Hope you enjoy. All right, Morten Knudsen, welcome to the pod. Yeah, um, thanks for having me on. Yes, it's our pleasure. Um, so first of all, tell everyone where you're from. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, from Denmark, born in Copenhagen. Um, yeah. Lived there for the first 15 years of my life, and then I've traveled the world playing football yeah. or soccer in your world. Yeah. <laughs> we can keep it to football, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan and I are big fans of Copenhagen, if you've seen our video of the Euros. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. Great time. It's basically our cousins. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so explain to us, uh, growing up in Denmark, how is youth football? How does it work there? I mean, once you start in the school, every every boy is going directly to the football after after the school. So for me, it wasn't even a choice. You just follow the other boys and you start. And then, yeah, after a year or two, people dropping off or so on. But yeah, I just continued. So literally everyone plays f- football there. When you when you grow up, it's it'd be quite weird if you weren't playing football. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, so did you did you have a passion for it growing up, or was it really just like you kind of didn't know anything else, so it was just something you were doing? Just something like I just followed the the boys, and we played in the school, and I wanted to be with the boys after school also, and. And then we had to play football again. So that was what we did. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. And then, um, so when did you get into, uh, into academy football? When did you play for, for, uh, you know, a a team and and things like this? Yeah. I mean, in Denmark, uh, the academy is starting from under 15. Mm -hmm. So like until that, you just play in, or most of the players play in the club where they are born, where they live. And then it starts to get more serious. So yeah, I, I played in my yeah my local team, HIK, uh, north of Copenhagen, for yeah seven eight years. And I wasn't really thinking about anything else. Um, of course, the Danish football system they have like these pre-national teams, regions teams as you call them. Mm-hmm. And you start to you think, okay, I'm actually good at this. And uh, already, as I was 12 years old, I think I was for trial in Chelsea. And yeah, at that time it was only fun. I didn't think anything huge about it. But yeah, mm-hmm. then uh, when you start to get uh, older, all of the teams in Copenhagen and also abroad, they start contacting you and. Uh, then you have to to take a choice, right? And so and so, how did you? What was the what was the choice that you that you made, and and when did you have to make it? Yeah, I mean, I had the choice to go to a FC Norseland. You know that team? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in Copenhagen. I could stay with my parents, but I had to use a lot of time from the high school to the football and to my home. So I would like waste a lot of time, and then. This uh, Midtjylland, FC Midtjylland, mm-hmm. uh, as you might know, mm-hmm. they yep. offered like a bigger package where you like you're living on a, on a boarding school. You have the mm-hmm. football, you have the school at the same place. Um, so actually, I took that offer for just one year to have the experience. And then I, I was planning to go home to my parents again and, and see what will happen after. But yeah, I, I never came home again. <laughs> and how so old were how you? Old, yeah. yeah. How old were you? Yeah, when that you, was when you um, that was uh, ninth grade in the Danish school system. So I was 14, 15. 15? 14, okay. 15, Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so <laughs> he never never came back home. So uh, <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, no. I want to fo- I want to follow this journey. So uh, how yeah, was uh, it for that? How was it for that year? And then you know what, what changed at the end? I mean, it was just. This this team, Midtjylland, was the, the biggest team for the talent 
uh, I mean, they had the biggest talent program at that time mm-hmm. in Denmark. Mm-hmm. So I just had the best players around me. I had the best coaches and yeah, I got all of the opportunities that I could ever wish for. And then, uh, yeah, I felt that the environment over there was was nice and I couldn't see see why I had to change that. Mm. And what was the biggest difference from going from just your local club to there? Uh, and what improvements did you see in your in your personal game? Uh, yeah, first of all, you start by, you know, doubling up your training load. So you, mm-hmm. you go from three to seven times a week. So you like you do trainings 7.40 in the morning before you start school and then you do it after school as well. So the physical, like part of it was was big and you have to get used to the load but they also did it in a very clever way because some of the trainings were just like tacticals and other were just technical and maybe you didn't train together with the whole team but you just trained like for me with two other midfield players and focusing only on one subject so Mm -hmm. like the physical part wasn't always the most important Mm -hmm. but just to like get all of these different aspects during mm-hmm. the week yeah. right and was it was it just other uh danish players there or are is are they taken from around the world into the into the youth system at that time it was mostly danish players and then they had uh, this collaboration with the the fc Adebay in nigeria so okay african players and mm-hmm. uh, yeah i think they had like four in each year, mm-hmm. players from Nigeria mm-hmm. coming to to our academy. Mm-hmm. So, but you you really enjoyed it, but then you said you didn't you didn't want to leave or didn't feel like you had to leave, but you ultimately do leave after after one year. So, so what happens here? Uh, actually, I, I stayed there for two and a half years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I went to to the national team. Uh, mm-hmm. In my first year at the at the academy, mm-hmm. playing a tournament in Italy, um, yeah, all of the biggest clubs in Italy were of course there. I was mm-hmm. I was promoted as the best player of the tournament, and uh, yeah, naturally you get a lot of offers. And yeah, I went to Inter, Inter Milan, to 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 see the place. And I went there a couple of times, and then uh, they got more concrete. And um, mm-hmm. yeah. I just, I mean, I didn't know what, what to do, but when I when I moved to Michelin at that time, I wasn't sure, but I took the chance mm-hmm. and I had the same feeling about this. So, I mean, sometimes you just have to, to take a jump. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. And did you feel, did you feel like, wow, I'm about to go play from, you know, a big club in Denmark, the biggest club in Denmark, but to Inter Milan, I mean, a world, a world renowned football club. Did you feel how big that move was? Or like you said, it was just like, oh, it's just another step. For me, it was just another step. Um, I didn't think so much about it, actually. I just, mm-hmm. yeah, I never, as I told you in the start, I never really took a decision to play football. It just came step by step. Mm-hmm. So that was just the next step on my journey. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I, mean, I don't want to gloss over it because it's such a cool accomplishment though, but you played for, you played for the, for the national team from U16 to, to U20. Is that correct? Uh, under, yeah. U16 to 19. U19. Okay. And yeah. so how, I mean, what was that experience like, you know, representing your country? Is it, did, did you feel how big that was as well? Or was it just another thing that was like, it just is coming and I'm just going with going with the flow. Of course, you appreciate to be a part of the, the national team. And uh, yeah, the players that I played with was players that I have like played alongside or against for the for the whole of my life, actually. Mm-hmm. So I knew all of them. Uh, so it was just nice to like get together the best players and, and do something nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Denmark is not such a big country, so like it's not that huge, but uh, right even though it's very nice yeah any notable names that we or our listeners might know of at, yeah at some big clubs probably yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Okay, yeah, wow. Yeah, and uh, Andreas Christensen in mm -hmm. Chelsea. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Decent yeah, name. Names. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just, just a bit. And, and during the youth team, were they standout players? Because you hear a lot that, like, sometimes in the youth, these players were not exceptional. And then, you know, 18 years old, 19 years old, they just skyrocket and they kind of make I mean, a big jump. And, and Andreas Christensen, he's like one year younger. So, of course, to be with us, he was already that at that time a good talent. Right. Uh, Pierre, he was just uh, like all of us. Was like, like, I think in the first game he started out and uh, he was on the bench. Yeah. So, just, yeah. It just uh, it wasn't that you could just see that he's on a higher level right, at that time. Right, right, mm -hmm. So cool. And so you you win player of the tournament at this, and I mean, I, I still I from from hearing it so far, it, it just doesn't feel like um, I don't know you ha not that you didn't have the passion for it, but maybe that it wasn't like something that you wanted to do since a young kid, like to play professional football. Is, is that true or did you feel like it was, you know, kind of half and half? I mean, I like to play football, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not my, my life. It's not my entire life. And I appreciate a lot of other things in life as well. Um, so, yeah, actually, sometimes uh, I just wanted to be my hobby and then, uh, yeah, do as best as I can. And then we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And did you did you feel like it was keeping you from other things as, as a youth player, or were you not thinking too deeply on that level? Of course you say no to a lot of things and especially living away from your, your family and your friends, you, you have a lot of, yeah, I don't know the word in English actually, but you, 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 of course you, you say no to a lot of things that you can't like be a part of, but mm -hmm. um it wasn't like a big, big thing for me at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then, then let's go. So you moved to Italy. Now you're in a new country that uh, doesn't speak English or Danish. First off, because, uh, you know, as, as you're in Germany, now you're learning German. How was that learning Italian? I mean, I had to learn Italian, of course, because, I mean, one guy on my team, he's he was Danish and then another okay. another guy he spoke a little bit of English and that was it. Uh, so two people. That's it. Two people. Yeah. <laughs> and the, tra and then, the trainer didn't speak any English. Actually, in the start, we had this uh, Stramaccioni, who was then later on the first team coach and okay. the um, the coach of Udinese. Um, okay. He spoke a little bit of English which was very nice, but afterwards, no, they didn't speak anything. So I just like in every exercise, I just watched, learned what we were doing. <laughs> Sit at the like back that. of the line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then, and then, so how does, how does that progress? Because now you're the first time away from your parents, away from your home country and you're only, you're 17 at the time. Correct. Yeah. I have to like say that, I was away from my parents for already two and a half years at that time. So I was okay. used to like handle my life at my own. Right. Mm -hmm. But of course the, the part with the language was, was difficult. And also when you get to a club like Inter, they have maybe one or two players in every year, which goes on to the, to the first team. So everybody is trying to get you down because there's only one spot. Mm -hmm. So there's no so friend, there's no, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, how to say, nice feelings in the in the dressing rooms. Okay. So that was a big part, and I always played because I, I like to be around the boys. And now suddenly that part wasn't wasn't a, a part of the Italian culture. So uh, that was difficult, of course. Do you feel like it it affected your performances in any way, or how you you approached training and games? You know, missing that that element and it being much more cutthroat. Yeah, I mean, definitely in the start, you know, it it took away a lot of the the happiness about the the game because you have nobody to share that happiness with. Mm -hmm. um, but then you start to like know how to behave in this this dressing room, this culture, and then. Then it starts to get 
like the new normal, but I would I would lie if I if I say that's the most uh, if that's the the way I, I like it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, what are some things that you adapted to in this dressing room? Like you said, you said you learned how to adapt and kind of uh, succeed in this environment. What are some things that were noticeable differences from going from Denmark to Inter? Oh, many actually. I mean, also just the facilities in Denmark, I was just used to like, we have 10, 10 uh, pitches. We can just choose every day. If, if one was bad, we just mm -hmm. choose another one. And here we, we started on with the, you know, first generation artificial. So it's just hard like a rock, man. I was just okay. fucked up to my knees. And, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, wow. they had like one proper pitch, but it was maybe one or two times a week that we go there. Otherwise, we just train on this artificial. Okay. It's surprising that it, it that a club like that would have so much time spent on an artificial surface. Yeah. I mean, I think that they they want to say to the young players, you are nothing. You have to okay, earn it. Yeah. And then when mm -hmm. you get there, you had a lot of like nice facilities in the first team and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, they don't want to make them think they are stars already. That's okay. mm -hmm. that's what I think, at least. Yeah. And Denmark, they're and just so like, hey, you guys are superstars. <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick yeah. the pitch for the day. <laughs> yeah. uh, like this one has a bump. No go. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. So yeah. can you bring I us mean, through also, like... Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, also just the, the, the way of training is totally different. In Denmark, I was used to train a lot of times but maybe short, shorter time uh, maybe one hour one one hour and 15 minutes and Italy we could easily train for two and a half hours in a row and that was because we could only like train once a day because in Italy they don't work together the clubs doesn't work together with with the school so we can only train in the afternoon and okay. if we have to train a lot we have to train a lot at once okay I see. Yeah. So that I was going to ask that this was a major difference where you weren't waking up, then go like playing, then going to school, then training again. So you would you would go to school somewhere somewhere nearby, but you would live, you know, from Inter Milan facilities. So how, how did how did the whole setup work? Yeah, for for a start, I was 17 when I came there. So before you turn 18, you have to live on the academy. Mm -hmm. Um. So I would just wake up and for the first half a year, I went to uh, an international IB uh, school in Milan. But I mean, I couldn't be there enough. It didn't work out at all. But, but then we would train around three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, that was the day. So, I mean, that was a huge difference. Um, so, I mean, I had no, after the first half a year, I quit the international school and I started studying online courses in Denmark. Okay. And then I could start doing my gym in the morning and stuff like that, which suited me the best. Right. Okay. And what about the level of the players? Was there a significant difference? I mean, it's a lot more technical. All of the players are so good with the ball. Uh, okay. But... But physically, the Danish league was much stronger. Um, mm. So I don't know. Maybe if we we never met a Danish team actually, but uh, I think it would be quite equal. Okay, mm. to balance each yeah. other out. Yeah. And so at Inter, at Inter, is there? We kind of touched a little bit about the differences in in culture and the dressing room and stuff. Did you find that there were many? different types of rules that you weren't used to and things that you just couldn't wrap your head around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many unspoken rules that you just don't do. I mean, and how should I know? They don't say it. For example, <laughs> no after, you, okay. <laughs> for example, after one game we draw at home, my girlfriend, she, she was in Milan for the weekend mm -hmm. and I went to her, give her a hug. And when I came into the dressing room, they said, oh, you cannot do that when we not win the game. How the fuck should I know? You should please <laughs> tell me. 
So yeah, and then maybe you could do it, but not if you lived on the academy. So if you lived on the academy, they they could decide what you have to do and what not to do. Mm-hmm. And who's so, they? Like, huh? Who is that, who that is they? The, that was the trainer or the yeah the director of the academy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I was eighteen at that time, so the next week I found an apartment. So they couldn't uh, <laughs> they couldn't uh, tell you you couldn't give a hug people. or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Is there any any other ones that come to mind? I feel like this is a this is I a mean, cool also, topic. Yeah. Also, like just this um, in Denmark, we just used to go to the shower with no uh, sandals on. How you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I did that the first time in Italy. They just looked at me like I was some kind of uh, animal. <laughs> animal. Yeah. <laughs> disgusting animal <laughs> so, i mean yeah that's so also how... go ahead yeah no no just continue um so i was just going to say how how long did you did you spend at at inter or the you know the second team and and training with them before i know you had a few loans with uh partner clubs and things like this so how long were you were you training with inter and in in milan yeah i was in an Inter Milan for one and a half year. Okay. The first, I mean, I, I spent the first four months being injured after the first training. So that was also a nice start. Oh, no. Like, didn't really get into the social parts because I wasn't a part of the team and I wasn't, you know, uh, on, on, the, on the games. Right. Uh, but I, I suddenly got, uh, got ready again. And actually, the, the last part of the season, I trained with the first team. And played okay. the, the match for the for the youth team, and um, yeah, and then this uh, guy Stramaccioni he got fired for the first team, and uh, the new trainer was Walter Mazzari uh, mm-hmm. from uh, Napoli, and he was like uh, this old school kind of Italian guy. Uh, so I went to the training camp for the preseason. And uh, we were like six young players, and he didn't even want to name to learn our names. For 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 him, we were all bimbo, which means baby. So it was oh like God. <laughs> so I mean, I didn't feel like I was so much appreciated at that time. To be um, honest, I can imagine. <laughs> and but how was your experience beforehand? Before uh, the first coach got fired with training with the first team, how was that? Oh, that was that was so nice because I mean, then suddenly you're just playing football, but the guys that you're playing with is is Kovacic, it's Palacio, Guarin, uh, Cambiaso, and you mm-hmm. are able to do the same stuff that you normally do. So suddenly, I mean, it's like waking up in the middle of a dream and yeah, seeing big names, and uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're not different. You you're just the same guy. Right. That's great yeah and what were those what were those sessions like um compared to i mean so, so you weren't these weren't two and a half hour sessions with the first team were they or are they, no, they no, still no. similar in italy <laughs> okay they were much so, more balanced yeah uh-huh and it what would like, a day like that what would a day like that be for 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 training wise and just i guess give us a a nice day in the life of playing with the first team i mean uh it would be different if I was a part of the first team, of course. Uh, our young players, uh, we as the young players, we, we couldn't like enter their dressing room. So we just came mm-hmm. to the pitch. But uh, okay. yeah, we, we will go there in the morning, have breakfast, and then go to our young dressing room again. And the, 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 older dressing, room. <laughs> the bimbo dressing room, yeah. <laughs> the older will go to their early, like massage. With the, mm-hmm. the la, la cazzetta del sport and uh, maybe a espresso. Okay, Just, of uh, course. <laughs> nice warm up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. But you, and as young players, you're not allowed in there. Uh, we, we could watch maybe, but we cannot uh, get any massage. No, <laughs> Just no from espresso. The outside can you drink an espresso or no? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 not there. Not there. <laughs> okay. 
and then, and then uh, yeah we will start training at around 10 15 yeah a nice short training and then lunch at 12 and then sometimes that would be twice a day and and for the most it would be only once a day okay mm-hmm. and out, outside of training like when you're eating lunch and breakfast are you socializing with the first team or you're not allowed to i mean if you're on the pitch you can you can socialize but right but in, if you're not, no, no. I mean, then you then you stay, stay out. Yeah. Is that one of those unspoken rules too, or is that just something as a youth player you just? I you're... think it was like something to do with the young players, and I mean, if if I saw all the other young players going into the dressing room, I would just follow, but nobody did, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. right, it was just how it was. Yeah. Right. And were you able to to play in any any friendlies or anything like this or any games with the first team or? Uh, I had to play, and the day before I got injured. I mean, for yeah, I was that was in the pre pre training camp, and I was mm-hmm. just young and eager. I wanted to prove myself. Mm-hmm. I did everything I could, and I just got overtrained, and mm-hmm. I got okay. yeah, got so bad um yeah and the day after we had to play the first game so so that that was, that was yeah it. a big disappointment for me and and sure. afterwards they they had to go to 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 us as well and and play against real madrid and all of the big teams so and you would have oh, won like them. the summer and the summer cup games okay yeah i see yeah, yeah. Mm. damn and and how did you feel like with with the level and the trainings i know you said it was nice that you could do all the things that you could normally do against a Kovacic and Cambiasso and big names like this. Did you feel like, okay, I, I have a chance to, to earn a spot on the first team? Under the first coach? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. The second? Yeah. No, not at all. No, no. The Bimbo was not having it. No, no. I mean, I think the, the play is much more. Yeah. Balanced. It, Mm-hmm. They're not just stressing around. They're just keeping calm, waiting for the right moment. And when they find the right moment, they go 100%. Mm-hmm. I mean, the youth football, as you might know, is just chaotic. It's sometimes just like going from one end to another all mm-hmm. the time. Nobody takes the temperature because all of them, when they get the ball, they just want to prove themselves. Mm-hmm. A okay. bit like Germany. Like this league. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Germany, yeah. <laughs> oh my god okay all right yeah. so then i mean we're, we're at inter for uh, a year and a half i'm not sure if we're missing any any other big events that happened at inter no. while you were there no no okay no, so was... then this is where kind of i guess there was a stretch of of loans and being farmed out to affiliate clubs and things like this so we have prato and and regina yeah. I'm sure I my Italian pronunciation is terrible, it's, but it's um, can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So can you tell us how how those things came about? You know, the, the first move and then ultimately the what that experience was like? Yeah. OK. In Italy, first of all, they don't have second teams. I mean, Juventus has a second team, but mm. that's the only team. So mm. often they find a Serie B or Serie C club for their youth players, which has to, to turn, uh, yeah, into the, the grown-up football in the, in the senior ranks. Uh, so actually, Inter, they found this Prato, which is in, uh, yeah, near Florence. And uh, we were ten, 10 players of, of Inter in that one year. So it was basically a second team. Um, so, I mean... I knew a lot of the guys already and the atmosphere was definitely I think more relaxed than than if if I didn't know anybody um, okay. and the team was much younger than all of the other teams um, but I mean going from Inter I told that the facilities wasn't that good but if you see Serici I mean that was almost disgusting I mean, we, we only had one pitch and the other pitch was like a parking ground. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, the stadium was almost falling apart and 
two of three tribunes you couldn't enter because they were so dangerous. Uh, <laughs> they were so da- wait, they were so dangerous. They're falling How apart. They're no, falling, falling apart. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. but so, I mean, football-wise, in in youth football, it doesn't matter really if you win or lose. I mean, the only thing that most players are focused on is their own performance. Mm-hmm. But now suddenly you're playing for promotion or relegation and every point is counting. Um, so, I mean, that was a huge difference and it didn't really matter how you played. It just had to get, you just had to get points. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what were the, you know, what were the games like there? Did you guys do well? Were you playing? Did you feel like you were growing as a player there or was it uh, was it a tough period? It was a tough period because, yeah, I mean, I played three games and then I was injured from September to February or something like that. Again, oh, wow. a big problem for me in that or in these couple of years in Italy was that I just had too many injuries mm-hmm. and too long at a time. Mm-hmm. So I never really f- came into the rhythm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we ended up fighting for not relegating and yeah we succeeded but it's just so hard Uh, and then i don't know if it's good for the pod or not but there's a lot of uh when you enter the last three games in the in the league and Mm -hmm. some teams are safe some are not yeah i know yeah some some teams will pay to to get the results that they need Okay. Oh no, this is great for the pod. This we is great for the pod, please. This. Yeah. <laughs> don't please, don't gloss over this. Yeah, if you can, can you can you describe I mean as much as you can? We don't want you to get any legal trouble yeah, here. I but. mean I, I don't say any names, of course, but I we needed a, a draw in the last game and the other team was they were safe. Mm-hmm. And um, I was I was at my, my top level at that time. And suddenly, out of nowhere, I wasn't uh, a part of the squad for the game. And uh, nobody said anything. But then I found out that that we just paid the result to be 1-1, which also was the result in the end. And uh, this stupid Danish guy, he shouldn't ruin anything. So he, he should not be a part of the game. Okay, he doesn't know the ins and outs of, of how the Danish works, guy's going so. for a hat trick. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Damn, that's crazy. And how, and how is that like, you know, what does that feel I like mean, when it's like, wow, this is this is ridiculous? I mean, the at that time I was just if we if we end up lose that game, we would be playing for another month or two mm-hmm. so i was just hoping to get my vacation so i, I was actually just fuck off <laughs> yeah, that's fine yeah whatever <laughs> that's amazing uh, now that is amazing. Be- before we move on i wanted uh because we spoke to, about this uh, prior to the pod um what was the difference tactically going from denmark to inter i know you said the players were uh, much more technical in italy uh, or in Italy in general, what was uh, the huge difference tactically? Um, you are more aware of your defensive positions all the time and you are not so aggressive in the pressure. I mean, I actually don't see any, at that time, any of my teams having a, a real pressure. We're just standing low on the pitch waiting for the opponent to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Catenaccio. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Terrible pronunciation, but of course. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say it? He was, he was looking at me like, what language is that? <laughs> yeah. um, and then, uh, yeah, when I went to, when I went to uh, Regina, I had a coach who like, I was uh, in, in the midfield, we play with like one number six, two number eights. And if I was playing number eight in the right side, I couldn't enter the left side of the field at oh, wow, any okay. point in the game. So that was like so strict. I've never like 
tried anything like that before mm -hmm. i was just used to you know when you see the opportunity you go deep there or you go deep mm -hmm. there or something like mm -hmm. that and now suddenly i just have to stay in one one side of the game or one side of the field mm -hmm. and i felt like it was yeah it seems very limiting like it would be it would be very tough for you to yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it takes Damn. the the, the fluidity of the game of out of it game. yeah yeah I suppose so you defensively, it's a little stronger, maybe, but it seems ridiculous. Like, what about on a counter? If you're defending, you have to just stay in your channel. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> that was what he meant. Then other players oh. would have to go on the on the left side. I can't. I can't even imagine that. Like, imagine on a counter attack, you can't can't go to the other side of the field. Uh, yeah, the other guy just runs and scores, and you're just staying in your channel. It's like, hey, man, yeah. I'm stuck. I don't know. I guess there's in, like in some ways I don't feel like the Italian way of, of looking at football and how football is is played mm -hmm. is more old school compared to like the Danish, the English, mm -hmm. maybe also the new German generations of, of trainers way of, of seeing football. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean I guess Italy you always think of a classic like a one nil win. You know, score one goal and then just yeah play very defensive encounter and I mean did you did you find or did you take any uh, positives away from the tactical or things that you learned in Italy like I can't imagine that everything is bad I mean they won a World Cup in 2006 playing that sort of style yeah yeah I mean when you learn and you adapt to the Italian way it's very good when you play in Italy but I could feel when I when I went back to Denmark that I had lot I have lost a lot of my you know aggressivity mm -hmm. in my pressure. I was just getting used to maybe shadowing a little bit more, not going into the duo, and that was a part that I really had to pick up again because that's in this modern way of playing football, it's just so important. Right. Mm -hmm. And did you feel that, uh, like, was that always a part of your game before you went to Italy? And then when you went to Italy, maybe it's yeah, something that yeah. helped you stand out or they, they didn't like it and they wanted you to stop doing it? Yeah, I mean, you have to adapt to the way that they wanted to play. So right. in some way I lost it and I had to, to use some time to find it back again. Right, right. So uh, so your time at, at Regina and they they... The last game of the season, they forced no, a 1-1. No, that was at that was at that was at Prato, Prato or Regina. Prato. Yeah. yeah, at Prato. Yeah. Okay, so then the following season, you you transfer to a new team. No, I stayed in Prato for two years. Okay, and how was that second yeah. season? Mo most of the first season was uh, was ruined by my injuries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So I mean, at that time, it was the choice between going back to Denmark or trying to make it happen in Italy and yeah in the end uh, I, I thought maybe it was a good idea to to give it a go and, mm -hmm. and see now I after three years I I spoke Italian and I, I knew about the culture finally so mm -hmm. maybe it was the right time to to say I go all in again right mm -hmm. and now when you say you knew the culture what are some things that you finally understood I mean, just the basic about the language, humor. The humor is very, I mean, in Denmark, we use a lot of, uh, how do you say, sarcasm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarcastic jokes and stuff yeah. like that. And if you say that to an Italian, they just think that you're serious. I mean, <laughs> they do not find it funny. So, I mean, that's just so awkward. <laughs> so what, what is humor in Italy? Yeah. I mean, something about girls. That's always classic. That's okay. a classic. It's always classic. <laughs> All That's right, funny. so they just joke about girls and and bombies. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. All right, so then, uh, so you give it a go. You stay in Italy, and how'd that second season go? Um. Yeah, it was the first time really for yeah since I started in in Midtjylland at the academy that that I had one season without injuries. Mm -hmm. So it was. It was a good season for me to learn how to play football for an entire year. 
mm-hmm. and to get the body fit and ready to play every weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, the team, we didn't perform that good, but for me personally, it was an important year. And uh, let's not gloss over that. I think that's an important part of your story is what were these the same injuries, reoccurring injuries, or they were different injuries? And why do you think you uh, you kind of had so many injuries throughout the years? I mean, the, the, the biggest part, of course, was that that I didn't know how to get the right treatment. Uh, okay. I had my, my own fissure, as I call it, in, in Denmark, and we know how to handle it, but you had to, like, keep it going with the uh, treatments quite often. And when you find yourself in Italy and you don't have that part that, you know, that treatment part in, in your daily life, mm-hmm. it's difficult. Um, so, I mean, uh, sometimes I also, when I was, when I was ready after an injury, I, I wanted to, to prove myself too quickly instead of like building it slowly up again mm-hmm. to be ready to, to perform. Um, and that is immatureness. I think that you just want to, you're young and you want to, to prove everybody that, that you're capable of doing this. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And coming, coming back too quick. So, I mean, a big part of it is, is knowing your body. And I mm-hmm. didn't knew the science from my body at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually after that year, the first year in Prato, I haven't been injured with these things. So, I mean, taking it to, 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 to now, where I've been out for one year, that was a fracture. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's nothing that you can do about it. Right. But this was, was pure how you train and how you not react when your body says no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. The previous injuries. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, and what about, were you, eating anything in particular you did you change what you're eating or it was just how you were training no no uh i mean i, I never wanted to take football too serious mm-hmm. so i mean i cannot be that guy who's just focusing everything in my life to perform at the football pitch um so i just want to to have a normal life and eat of course you have to eat healthy but not mm-hmm. like over healthy so you're still eating your pizzas and spaghettis? <laughs> yeah, one today. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> How was uh, let's just sidetrack off football? How was life in Italy outside of football? Oh, that was great. That was great. Um, the first one and a half year, I was alone. My mm-hmm. girlfriend, which I found on the boarding school in the, in Michelin, and uh, we're still together actually. Uh, she came after the first one and a half year and yeah together we just experienced and traveled a lot of places in Italy and we were just Mm -hmm. just an amazing experience to have also together actually right um and we are we are avid travelers here we love to travel when we can where's the where do you recommend in Italy I mean the obvious thing is is Toscana Toscany Mm -hmm. um yeah, but it's, I mean, there's a lot of tourists already. And I see uh, so many Americans walking around in February in, in T-shirts and shorts. <laughs> we have such a reputation. Warm. We have a reputation. <laughs> it's we, have such a rep- <laughs> <laughs> we have such a reputation of, of, of Muscle ruining, shirts, no sleeves. ruining cities. Everyone's like, I hate Amsterdam because of the Americans there. It's like, yeah. I don't know, the Americans or the English? The English have a bad reputation it's the Eng- too. Oh, it's the English in Hamburg. Oh English, my God. Yeah. The English, they're always drunk. They're always drunk yeah, and that's loud. True. They're the loudest. The loudest. So Tuscany, okay, what else? And then, uh, yeah, this south part of Italy, which isn't that famous, uh, Reggio Calabria, which is like where Italy is kicking to Sicily. If you understand, okay, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the toes yeah. of the boot. Yeah, I mean that's that's that part from Naples, Naples, and down mm-hmm. to to Reggio is is not very famous, and I think it's it's worth visiting. Of course, mm-hmm. um, it's much more like Italy was supposed to be. No okay. tourists, a lot of beautiful nature, cheap food, good food, 
mm-hmm. uh, fantastic views, but also a lot of, I mean, the financial situation down there is, is not good. I mean, the roads are bumpy and mm-hmm. uh, the houses are almost falling apart at some places, but I mean, it's so, uh, I mean, it gives me so much more seeing these places than a place which is full of tourists. Right. Right, like from Americans. Americans. <laughs> and Americans, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? What is? What was? What is your favorite food in Italy? Your favorite dish? And that's a pasta. Um, <laughs> it has, I feel like it has to be yeah. a pasta. That's that's the classic one, uh, pasta al ragu, which okay. is also like, I think in in the US you would say pasta bolognese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like tomato really sauce have. and meat. Yeah, you don't you don't really find a find a bolognese in the, in Italy. They call okay. it al harabu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can, Can you find it here in Germany? I, I don't hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I wanna I wanna come. I love the life stuff, but I wanna come back into um into the football a little bit. So this entire time you're still under contract with with Inter, correct? But you're going on loan to these places. Yeah. So would you come back for the preseasons and, and train or was with the I mean, with the newer coaches, was that not an option? No, that was not an option at that time. Um, and then, to be honest, we were too far from the level of the first team. Uh, you play in, in the third best division. And how, how could you ever think that you are near the first team mm-hmm. in Serie A? I mean, mm-hmm. that's... That was what 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 I thought at that time, um, and nobody did go with the first team. So I mean, at, when you go to 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 the loans in Serie C or Serie B, it's it's not very likely that you're gonna have a career in the first team of Inter. Gotcha. Um, mm. So it's just to open other doors. You 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 go there. Right, and potentially yeah. maybe to a, a different Serie A team if you're lucky. Or you yeah. perform really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. So, how was that year at? Um, God, I don't want to pronounce anything anymore. How was that year at uh, Regina? Ah, it's good. It's good. It's always you just have to say Ar, 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 Regina. Regina. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it was. Uh, that was like even the Italians themselves. They say that's another country. So. It's, oh, really? Okay. I mean, if they just talk their normal dialect, you don't understand it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's that, I mean, they have their feelings just so much out on, on their clothes. And uh-huh. if you understand what I mean, I mean, they just react on everything and they are so open and yeah, speaking all the time and mm-hmm. In the north of Italy, just maybe more closed and more mm-hmm. calm and looking at people before they just talk to them. And uh, yeah, it's and very similar to how Germany is. North Germany is like this, and southern Germany is a little more open. It's funny. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, that's yeah, how, yeah. I mean, that's what I've experienced. That's a yeah. known thing that uh, northern Germany is quite close stare stare, stare first and then, stare, and then ask don't questions say anything. and in yeah, southern so, germany so it's... Denmark. so close Denmark is the same no 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 <laughs> oh you're saying okay i see once we yeah. get north up into yeah. Denmark okay i want to share my screen quick because just show where regina is can you see yeah mm-hmm. can you see my screen yeah it's very south and so, so it's, and also it's on like the most southern point a funny thing, okay. I mean, the the closest gap between uh, Sicily and and the and Italy, mm-hmm. the rest of Italy, is I mean three kilometers. This right here. Uh, yeah, the Messina. Okay, Messina yeah. Strait or something. Yeah, and uh, cool. they keep having the ferries, even though I mean it will be so much more. Uh, normal to have a, a bridge okay like it's uh, the mafia who is having them the ferries and they the mafia the, yeah the mafia and everybody the mafia, knows this the mafia is very big in uh, 
in in Reggio Calabria and also Sicily. Huh. Okay. Did you yeah, ever wow. have any, uh, any uh, run-ins <laughs> Other than with, the one the, one? with the mafia? No, nah, no, nah, I cannot say too much, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's smart. That's but very but smart. I mean, it's funny that they never built a bridge on that street. I mean, the Messina Street. Uh, and they see, say that it is because that, you know, the island is moving a little bit. And that's yeah. why it not be built. But like, I mean, likely story. <laughs> very likely, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Okay, so you're you're there for for one year, correct? Yeah, yeah. And were they in Siri Siri B or Siri C at the time? C, yeah. C, okay. So was that a similar experience in terms of um, you know, like the fields and the the training and the team, or was it uh, completely different, just like the culture was? I mean, Regina was a big club. They were a former Serie A team, and mm-hmm. uh, they were, because of their, f- their finances, relegated to Serie D. So they mm-hmm. were, like, going this way. Um, mm-hmm. So in the start, actually, because of the government, they closed our training facilities, so we could only oh, wow. train on the, on the stadium. And then oh, wow. after two months, they, they, they got permission to use the training facilities. And I mean, that's, you cannot compare Prato with Regina. Uh, it's another size. They has, the stadium is for 27,000. And, and the city is just, when things are going good, it's living football. Mm. It's meaning everything to them. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know Messina, the city just on the other side. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. When we play the derby, it's, it's uh, oh wow to die for yeah how many people okay. would be there i mean the first game was eight thousand, and it was only the third best division and, right. mm. and we wasn't even a top team but but now they they were promoting to set a b mm-hmm. and uh, suddenly the stadium was full yeah, yeah. <laughs> when things go well that's when the yeah. fans come in yeah. right exactly so wh- how how did you guys do that year? I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of changes in terms of players and management and things like this. So was it was it comparable to the year at at Prato in terms of football? I mean, in many ways it wasn't and on the other side we we wasn't playing for the promotion that I that I was hoping for. But we were safe, no problems with the relegation, but um I mean, when I came there, they they told me that they they were going for for Serie B, and we were we were we wasn't even near. So that was a big disappointment. Mm-hmm. But in terms of football, we we were playing a lot more football, and uh, you could feel that we were a bigger like club with a bigger history, and we mm-hmm. were expecting to 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 control the games and uh, yeah, and right. win, win. Yeah. Right. Now, how would you, I mean, this is the, the classic question, but how would you compare the Syria uh, C to here in, in Germany? That's very difficult because I only know this league, right? But um, I think it would be comparable with the, the Dritte Bundesliga. Okay. That's, yeah. Really? You think it's, it's, it's that high of a level? Yeah, I think so, definitely. Wow. Okay. Fascinating. I guess maybe it's the same as the Danish, like it's maybe a little more technical, but slower, less physical. Yeah, I mean, I would say that the best teams in, in CDG, they can be in the Danish Superliga, the best league. Okay. Wow, so it's a very good level. But yeah, I mean, the diversity between the teams. Sure, also- between the top teams and the bottom teams yeah. is a big difference, yeah. as it always is in those lower leagues. Um, so then from there, where did you move to? Did you stay another season at uh, Regina? No. Good pronunciation. Yeah. Thank you. I, I actually went to to Norway. But, okay. Yeah, for a short while, and then uh, then actually I didn't play there. Okay. So a lot of good stories, um, but yeah, I was I was registered for the squad too late, and then 
yeah, in, in the Christmas time. We they just, let you go? Yeah, we okay. just found, found a solution. Okay. So I, could go home again. I mean, after these five years, I, I just wanted to get some, uh, find a club where I had like a good position and, and where I, I could find some, some, yeah, some call again. Okay. Uh, after a lot of, yeah, exciting years. Mm -hmm. So, so then, so you, and Christmas time, you leave Norway and you go back to Denmark, correct? Yeah. And where did you yeah. go then? I, I went to Vensussel. Um, yeah, you do you probably don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what you said. I couldn't say it again. It's very far from Copenhagen. Okay. So far, yeah. And uh, we were in the second best division and we promoted to the Super League at, at that year in the okay. summer. So, I mean, my ambition to go home was to like build myself up again mm -hmm. and to prove myself again. And yeah, in, in a half a year, I already achieved that. So that was like the biggest turning point in my career at that point. Mm -hmm. oh, so you went from right at Christmas time, you were able to transfer to a club immediately and start the season with them? Yeah, in January, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And where was the team at the time sitting in the table? I think they were third or something. Okay. And one or two went up. Got it. Got it. So, okay. Yeah. And and you were able to stay healthy for that whole season or half a season. Yeah, yeah. And Very actually, nice. I started. Uh, I always played midfield, mm -hmm. but I started the first games as a right fullback. Okay. And Actually, it was so much more fun than I expected. Because <laughs> on the midfield, you're always running, and after every game, you're exhausted. You're so yep. exhausted, right? So then, exhausted. Sean, Sean has it easy. Yeah, and then when you get to to play the right fullback, of course, you have maybe some runs, which is more intensive, but mm -hmm. in total, the the load is not the same. And when you get the ball, you have just so much space to just drive it forward, mm -hmm. and. Uh, do something nice with the ball instead of having like three men in the bag every time you receive the ball yeah you can always see what's in front of you it's a that's a nice nice exactly. perk of it yeah so it was actually a very nice position to get back in shape because the load wasn't that exhausting and i could just yeah easily build it up again mm -hmm. And did you feel like being, you know, back in, in, in Denmark and in the culture and in how the trainings were, did you feel just more comfortable and just more able to, I guess, take the focus off the pressure and things like this and kind of enjoy the all around life? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, when you when you experience the world and see what, what the, like, for example, for example, a country like Italy has to offer. When you come home to Denmark again, you really appreciate what we have here in Denmark. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything is just so nice, so good. There's no problems. There's no really financial problems. You get your salaries and stuff there's like no, that. There's no mafia. There's no mafia. Is there a Danish mafia? <laughs> I don't know. It's not something <laughs> that we talk about. No. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it's an unspoken rule. <laughs> So, I mean, just to sit on that for a little bit, are there, were there, you know, a lot of dirty sides to the game in, in Italy and, and politics that you just don't get in, in, in Denmark? Yeah. I mean, in Denmark, the, the game is more pure. It's just okay. football. And then when you go home from football, you're, you're just your normal person. But in Italy, just keep being a football player when you go home from training. Okay, I see. And that's, I mean, we, we've described it a little bit. That's, you always wanted to have a balance. You never wanted to be so far into football where there wasn't, you know, time away from it. So mm -hmm. I bet that was, it was very nice coming back to, to, to Denmark and I guess maybe finding some new, some new passions and things like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I tried to be too focused on football and too eager to do well all the time. And I just found out that I was just putting too much pressure on myself all the time and I wasn't enjoying it at all. Mm -hmm. So at, at points, I, I just 
actually I just wanted to quit and say no that's it mm -hmm. I don't want to do it anymore and mm -hmm. then when I came home and started to have like things beside the football that you can do um, I just found it so much more easy and uh, yeah and from that point I also decided that I would never go 100% into football because that's maybe not the best solution for my for my side eh? mm -hmm. and uh, yeah of course it's not the right uh, decision for everyone somebody mm -hmm. likes to be in this focused world but for me it doesn't work yeah yeah i think it's important to kind of know what's best for you and it's it, i feel like with that balance it maybe brought the best out of you on the field as well exactly i mm -hmm. just went to the field being relaxed not thinking about about too much uh, just playing football because I, mm -hmm. I love the game. Mm -hmm. Right. Now it's tough. It's tough to live with any type of like regrets or things, but it, are there things that you would have changed in your decision-making, I guess, maybe from taking contracts or working with certain, you know, agents or whatever, are there things that you kind of wish you could change on, on your journey? Uh, of course, there's also always a lot of things that I, you could change but in the end i got like an amazing experience in italy and i was thinking also i also could go to maybe another country to to maybe a country which is more familiar uh, like the netherlands or another country with with a culture closer to the danish and and also where you can speak english and stuff like that but i mean personally i just got so much more out of it and mm. Actually, I don't regret anything, but I, I mean, if I could do, if I will do one thing uh, again, then, then maybe I should have been more aware about how my body was reacting. So, I mean, now I have, if I look in total, I have three years that I didn't play football. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. right. That's a lot of time. Yeah. Something that I'm hoping to add on in the other end. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, it all comes down to how you uh, to take care of your body. But I also think for you, it definitely seems important that you don't take football so seriously. Yeah, which yeah. for our listeners might sound crazy, but uh, you need to find the balance. And like you said, enjoying playing uh, and, and just enjoying when you go to training and enjoying the games and having fun uh, is a big part of it, not putting too much pressure on yourself, which I also think is a fascinating transition to what you said to me is that you do not like watching football. You think mm -hmm. it's so boring. Uh, please talk about that because for Dylan and I, that's like, we just love watching football. We spend the weekends watching football, watching highlights and so yeah. But you, you could care less. I mean, I like to, to watch football when I know the players or... Personally. Yeah, personally, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because then I can relate to it. But otherwise, I just find it so boring. And I also, I, I told you that, I mean, sometimes a football game would be so great if it was only 60 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it would be much more intense and much more like... Uh, I don't know, for you Americans, you don't know anything about handball, do you? Very uh, just from bit. living just from yeah. living in europe yeah. for a bit yeah. yeah yeah but that's that's a good amount of time you can get it, give everything you have and it's good for the for the for the audience for the mm -hmm. spectators as well and you mm -hmm. don't have to waste so much time on it i mean <laughs> i think i'm just wasting my time watching a football game oh it's so funny and and what do you prefer to watch instead or is there any other sport that you really enjoy yeah, I like cycling a lot. Okay. And how did you get into this? Well, I mean, for many people, that's even more boring than football. So, I mean, it's also <laughs> who you are as a person, of course. But I mean, right, of course. I think it, it has to do with, you know, I've been using so much time on football in the past. So I don't want to use that much time anymore. So that's maybe why I found this cycling okay, yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I like to, to connect or to to go offline from the football world uh, with, mm -hmm. with the cycling right do you do you feel like there's a time where you're done playing and you kind of don't really have any connection to football whether it's coaching or anything like this do you feel like 
once you're done playing, then then it's kind of goodbye. I mean, that's my plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I will never say never, but I, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't see myself being in this world when I'm done playing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Then, then it should be something with the kids and and make them uh, learn how to not take take football too serious too early and to enjoy the game <laughs> even more mm-hmm. because now also in Denmark as in the rest of the world they they start picking up the talents even younger and younger mm-hmm. so they take away all of the happiness and their in, yeah yeah their normal joy about football right. from an early right. age and that's that's a pity. Just going with the boys. It's yeah, a great point. There's so much, there's the so much money on. involved. There's so much money involved now that it's like, it's too much where they're buying players for millions of dollars when they're, you know, small, they're tiny little kids. It's it's quite crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the the boys, you also see it now, the young boys, they are just so incredible, incredible talented, but they start training as a pro as, as 10 year old. Right. I mean, They've, they've never tried anything else. And I think the, the guys who is, who is pres- proceeding in, in this culture is going to be the best. No doubt about that. But there's a lot of guys who is like breaking their neck on this and it, it just gets too much, I think. Right. Mentally, I think it it yeah. plays a part. And that's why you see athletes now dropping out a lot earlier than you'd think i think it has a lot to do with the mental side of it yeah it's it's not it's no longer fun which seems crazy for the outside fan but i can understand it i mean even like you said where you just it you're not enjoying training anymore it just becomes like a job that you don't like which is crazy for some people to think like oh you you're kicking a ball but like Yeah, yeah that is the reality now do you think you've reached your full potential no, nah, no, nah, not at all. Love not it. At all. Well, you gotta add this. You have you have at least the three years to add on to your career that you lost. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Of course, I want to develop still as a football player, mm-hmm. but I just want to do as best as I can without putting too much pressure on myself. Sure. But, I mean, I knew I had the same talent as 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 players playing in the Premier League. So of course, I cannot say that I've I've, I've done what I, I I possibly could have done, but um, yeah, that's also life. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and how are you finding? I know you. So for our listeners, Morin has been in Germany now for two months, six weeks. About. Six weeks. Yeah. yeah. How are you finding football here? Because it's the first time in Germany for you. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a bit like going to Italy. There's a lot of unspoken rules. There's mm-hmm. a lot of uh, chaotic play. Um, but first of all, I think it's it's also nice to see after almost four years in Denmark, it's nice to experience how how people you know look at football and how much they, they put into it again. Mm-hmm. And then I have my experience that I can say, yeah, it's nice that they are doing this, but I, I, I still have to keep it down and keep it chill mm-hmm. in order to perform at the best. Right, right. I want to hear it. I want to hear an unspoken rule, uh, unspoken German rule. Yeah, that's your I mean, one. I mean, you can probably tell me more about them, but don't you think there's a lot? Yeah, I think there there definitely are. It, it's it's cultural differences too, yeah. or just things that you would normally do. People are like, huh? Yeah. I can't right. think of one right now off the top of my head, but um... I mean, this this when when the trainers coming to the pitch, everybody's just automatically go goes to the trainer and says hello. I never did that in Denmark. Mm. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, this is you don't ever I guess say this hello. Is a German thing. I usually say hello, but it's like in the military, they just as soon as they see him, they just go and say hello, shake <laughs> hand. Yeah, yeah. I guess we. I mean, we don't really do that. There was a few guys who did that in America, but it's not really a thing. Like we never did that. No, in it was college more, it was, it was like much that. more casual. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know if it's a bad, a good thing or a bad thing, but oh, it's no, no, no. just it's a, just a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a cultural yeah. thing. Um, yeah, I'm sure that. Let's hear one more. What else? You're fresh. You're fresh here in Germany, so you got it. It's on yeah, the top yeah, of your yeah. mind. But I also have to be careful now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah nothing, exactly. Nothing. He's got yeah, it. But anyway, <laughs> you don't understand it. 
yeah it's a it's a fine line i mean we could uh it'll take me a second to think of some but uh, i mean there's a lot a of, there's a lot of unspoken rules with like this. with rondo that's different that's that's uh, i have to say it. that's fucked up <laughs> oh <laughs> please i want to hear okay. i mean if you do like a tunnel like a meg it, it hits the leg mm-hmm. then normally it's a touch and it's it's a no-go it's but done here, yeah yeah and here it just continues mm-hmm yeah, yeah it's not an it's not an extra life right but it's like you, you play it out until going. you find yeah. it again yeah, yeah. yeah that is it different goes, it goes through but you hit it even though but it mm-hmm. goes through anyway you just keep playing counts. yeah but it counts as a yeah a tunnel right you pay for no, it. no 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 only if it goes through with no touch i really so here's here's the unspoken rule <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but it if it touches it clean. you just play on it has to go yeah. through clean. And then when the ball yeah. is out of the pitch, it can bounce once. Yeah. Yeah. This is another stupid thing. Oh, this is this is one that's, that's the stupidest a rule. Because then yeah, you wind up playing that's, that's outside a, of the the square. You wind up just p- keeping the ball up twenty meters and the away. People are just heading it back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a rule because of lack of technique. <laughs> no? Ooh, come Ooh. with it. <laughs> shots fired yeah i think i think it i agree with that it's a good point i don't like it either but it's ridiculous is it also in nordstedt like that yeah it's the same anywhere in germany it's i mean anywhere i played it's this it's the standard it's like and then when it goes out people start heading it back and forth and i'm not the tallest guy either so it's like at this point i'm like fuck i might as well just stay in the middle yeah yeah Yeah. exactly now is this these are I feel like there's some more with Rondo too, but that's there's a know. bunch with Rondo. And then people point at each other who's whose turn it is, whose fault whose it was. And then there's yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, it is what it is. It was worse yeah. at Meyendorf than it is now. It's worse at many other clubs, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And more than we'll finish up with this. Uh advice to your younger self or younger players trying to, to break through. Yeah, I mean, uh, do what you can, um, do your training, uh, and 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 enjoy enjoy what you're doing, and uh, then as long as you do what you can, you cannot expect anything more from yourself. I think, and that's that how it is. And and then if you're good enough, it will happen, and if you're not, it will not. And that's just how it is. So just keep doing your things and have fun with it. And then, then everything will find its place. I think. Love it. I like that. Simple. Yeah. Very simple. So until next time, keep moving forward. Keep learning. Make your own path. There you go. Thank you, Morton. Appreciate it. Thank you, Morton. It was a pleasure. Right, man. Footwork is sponsored by ourselves. Also, Kong Fitness and Merchant Designs, baby. Follow us on Instagram at footwork underscore podcast. Twitter is at Footwork Podcast. YouTube and Facebook, just check out Footwork Podcast, search it. Email us if you need anything, any questions at footworkpodcast at gmail.com. And remember, plug, plug, pass. Tell your parents, Amazon delivery guy, mailman, I don't know who, just tell them. Like, subscribe, review, all of it helps. Danke.